Steve Dotto here, and today we're going to start diving into some of the details of using uh, the event management uh, application called Eventbrite. Now, Eventbrite lives on the web. It's a web 2.0 application, free to sign up for, and once you have an account set up, you can use it to create and manage your own events, and pretty much any type of event can be managed through Eventbrite. You can do concerts, you can do workshops, you can do classes, you can do conferences, you can do online events, and it handles all of the registration information, communicating with your attendees, collecting money if it's a, if it's a paid for event. Uh, it does a tremendous job. And one of the real bonuses is it also creates a whole bunch of assets that you can use to help market your event, especially social media, especially social media assets. So we'll be looking at those through this series of short little videos and I want to kind of keep them small because there's an awful lot to digest. So let's just start with the basics now, setting up your event within Eventbrite. Sign up for an account, it's free. Uh, Eventbrite really doesn't cost you anything until you actually make revenue from it and then it doesn't have to cost you anything either because you can pass the costs on to the people purchasing the tickets and it's very reasonably priced for the uh, for the uh, for the control that you get out of it. So I've got my account here open and I've used it for three of my own accounts. I've used it for a couple of client accounts as well, so that gives me a fair bit of experience in it. Uh, but I've got three accounts. I'm going to show you what happens when you go about creating a new event. And it's a pretty simple process. It's like if you've used WordPress or any of the other content management systems, it's very similar in a lot of ways because basically you're creating a web page, you're creating a web presence when you create an event bright listing. So we see here that I've got my, uh, I can give my event title and I'm going to give it Steve Sample. Steve's Sample Event because it's not real and it's that's just an awesome name because there's a little bit of alliteration happening with the Steve and Sample. Um, and, then, and then you can put in the venue name. If you're doing an online event, if you click here on online event, it takes the address out because it's online. So you can use it for signing up people for online events. If you're doing webinars or if you're doing any online training, it works in that environment as well. As I said, very flexible. The next thing you do is you put in the address of where your event is. And if it's at a major conference center or a major hotel, you just put in the street address. So I've, I'm putting in the street address here for uh, where I am planning on possibly hosting an event in the future at a country club locally. And there it is. It populates the map for us automatically. So this is the beginning of some of the real nice little features. You know, you don't have to create your own map, copy and paste it in, put it in your own website. You put the map in, you put the address in, and it gives you a dynamic. It gives your attendees, people visiting the page, a dynamic map that they'll be able to zoom in and out with so that they can figure out the exact location of your event. Very nice and very elegant. The next thing is setting up your date and time. Now, I should point out at this point here that they've got some really good online help through the entire process. And I found that anytime I run into any issues at all, I just do a quick search right within Google. Uh, I say Eventbrite, uh, tickets, extra tickets. And I put in that question, I just put in that text. And their online help, which you can also obviously access through the interface here, but their online help is superb. And I found answers to almost every question that I've had. And the times that I've had other questions, their technical support people respond very, very quickly with very clear, not always the answer you want, it always solve the problem, but they answer very quickly with exactly, with, it, with, it, with an answer that you can use. Um, so you could set in next, you set in the date and the time, and you can use a calendar, of course, to set it up. Uh, you set in the date of the event, uh, set in the date, there we go. You set in the time, uh, the end date, and time if it's a multi-day event you put that in there and you can also set up for multiple events which I will talk about uh, a little bit later that's where with say within a theater production you have you know a Thursday Friday Saturday performance or if it's a three-day conference so you can set it up over multiple uh, multiple days or have multiple events within your within your master event um, and you click there if, if this event repeats and then you add the extra days as you go along so that's a that's an and it, you have to be careful though one tip is you have to be very careful if you do set up a multiple event and then you want to make changes after purchasing has started before anybody buys a, anybody buys a ticket you can make all the changes you want to the to the uh, to the structure of your event but once somebody's bought a ticket you can't make changes to like the time or the number of tickets i don't think you can change, you can't change the number of tickets but you can't change the time uh, so there are things that you can't change so Double, triple, or quadruple checking hours, dates, addresses is crucial when you put this together, uh, when you're putting on an event. That's one of the things that the disciplines you really have to put in place yourself. 
Uh, then you can upload your uh, then you can upload your logo if you'd like. You can just choose a file and upload it so you can have a logo. Um, there is ways to dress up the page a little bit more, which we'll talk about one of the more advanced videos, uh, adding a header, a custom header, and things like that. But this allows you to upload a logo of your in event. So I'm just going to choose a quickly choose a one of my logo files here. Uh, just humor me for a moment. I'm going to find my little Dottotech logo. There it is. My cute little logo. There it is. Dottotech. Upload it. There it is. Oh, so exciting. It's so cute and little. There we go. Now, event description. This is where you put in your the text, which basically is going to tell people about your event itself. And as anybody who's, as I said, worked in WordPress or Drupal, they're going to recognize a WYSIWYG HTML editor. So you can go in here and you can write within this. You can copy and paste into it. Um, now, here's a trick that I use. I'm not sure this is actually um, ideal web practices, but I often create all of my information in my Drupal site because just because I'm so used to the the editor here and this is my main website. This is the editor for my main website. So I created, say for example, this description of an event which we just put on. So I laid that all out in tables and the real web people out there will laugh at my lame at my lame web work. But nevertheless it's mine and I'm not that ashamed of it. Um, Here's the trick you do, is you have to go over and choose source code to copy and paste it. Once you choose the source code, you select your, 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 uh, your copy. I'm copying that. I'm going back into Eventbrite, and then you have to choose here the HTML button. Choose that, and then you can just paste the source code in, update it, and voila! all of the information comes through. Now it doesn't all come through perfect. You have to go through and sometimes you have to change uh, font or uh, um, sometimes you have you have to make sure that the, the photos all resolve properly through so you can get the, the photos there. Uh, in this case here, it doesn't center it. So you have to go through and you have to maybe manually go through and center some of the text to make it look proper. But this is still a much faster and efficient way to get your main stuff in. Oh, look, so there's some broken images that I'd have to go through and I would have to check on. So you can do a fair bit of, uh, so you can do a fair bit of the work beforehand, or you can repurpose assets you already have. That's a big deal. If you've already got a web page that describes the event and you want to clip things out of that web page, which most people would have, say, for an educational conference, there would already be some, some content available. You can pick and choose from that content and then use it for your Eventbrite page as well. That's a great way to do things. Uh, you can also incorporate other types. You can bring in your own graphics. You can also incorporate things like uh, video. You can incorporate streaming video into the site. You can embed, uh, say, a YouTube video or something like that in it as well. Once you're through that, you then decide uh, exactly if you want social links to your event listing. And here's one of the places that Eventbrite really starts to take off is where we start using it, uh, where, where, where people, as they sign up, they see their friends on Facebook who have already bought tickets or have already ordered or are looking at it. So creating that kind of social churn, as well as the widgets that we'll be talking about a bit later, that's the sort of thing that you really have to spend some time examining within Eventbrite, determining if you want to use, and then figuring out a strategy to make sure that it works for you. So it's, it's going to be worth taking a little bit of time. I've given I've written a description. This is in my pro, in my main profile, which describes who I am. So that goes into all of my events, and then I can choose to link it through to my Facebook and my Twitter account uh, here, which is which just basically, act, as I said, adds to that social churn. Now we're through a lot of the drudgery, and it's time for some of the fun work within it, which is how much money am I going to charge for my tickets, or am I going to give the tickets away for free? How many tickets do I have, and dealing with the tickets? But I'm going to leave that for the next video because around your creation of tickets comes some additional th thought that you have to put in such as, okay, I'm selling tickets, but am I selling meals that are attached or am I selling a t-shirt or a book? And so we're going to have to go a little more detail into the whole ticketing process. But this is the beginning of using Eventbrite. There'll be a whole series of videos in this series, a series of videos in this series. That was brilliant. Uh, so, so keep your eye on, on this YouTube channel or on my website as they will be coming out on a fairly regular basis. I hope you found this useful. If you have, please give us a like and be sure to tune in for more of our how-to videos. I'm Steve Dotto. Thanks for spending time with me today.